Hey everybody, it's Professor Diffley again. Uh, so this is uh, part three of the uh, Unit 3 uh, History 110 uh, lecture slide. So where we left off last time, we had just finished King Philip's War. So that's the slide before this. We are now moving on to uh, another colony, a new colony, the founding of Carolina. So here that is both North and South Carolina, as you know today. This is just the Carolina colony. So you can see when it was uh, the early founding of it. So one, this is a, a colony that is often called a colony of a colony. Um, so uh, two reasons for its creation. One, against a buffer against the Spanish. Uh, if you actually read the uh, creation, the grant from the king to uh, the uh, proprietors uh, who got set up the colony, it says that this is specifically to stop Spanish encroachment. So this is uh, put a, 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 you know, another area in between Virginia and uh, Spanish control of Florida. So that's what we're looking at. So it's a uh, buffer against Spanish uh, expansion. It's also a colony of a colony. Uh, the people who set up this colony are actually from the colony of Barbados, another English colony. It does not be Barbados, obviously, doesn't become American, uh, but they uh, send their children here. Barbados is a small, extraordinarily rich plantation uh, economy. Problem was they didn't have enough land to give to the sons of the uh, planters, you know, the rich uh, plantation owners. So they looked uh, elsewhere and they found Carolina. Uh, it's actually named Carolina is, uh, uh, you know, it's actually named after Charles is uh, who it is. So it's uh, uh, that uh, relations with American Indians. Uh, early interactions uh, were uh, OK. At first, there was uh, some trading and things like that, fur trading uh, you know, for uh, hides and things. Eventually, uh, what they did, though, in the Carolinas is they uh, captured a lot of the natives and sent them into uh, slavery in the Caribbean. A uh, thing to mention, because that's not the first time we saw the Native Americans in the Northeast and New England, uh, now here are sent into slavery in the uh, uh, Caribbean. Why not keep them as slaves there in their homes? Well, that's the reason, because it's their homes. They know the territory. Um, they could always, uh, you know, put up a resistance. You move them to the Caribbean, across the continent, you know, down the continent and across waters, they can never get home. So they sell them away that way. Uh, and you can see there are uh, uprisings here. Um, in uh, 1715, um, uh, caused by the tensions between them. Again, there are notes uh, to all the slides, as you can see here. So again, just to go back and out of the slideshow, right? So uh, again, uh, the, the, the debts and uh, uh, raids uh, bring uh, all of this. Um, and again, you result in um, the enslavement or expulsion of the uh, natives uh, into uh, uh, Spanish territory, uh, what becomes Florida. So yet another area, part of English expansion. Oh, get back to where we were. Uh, another part of English expansion is eventually uprooting and getting rid of the uh, the natives. Uh, very important uh, here for the English, unlike the Spanish who wanted gold to convert the Indians and to uh, control their labor. Labor. Uh, the English want land. Uh, England is small. It had an excess population. So its goal was to uh, uh, uproot, move, uh, didn't, you know, didn't always intend to kill them, but just get rid of them in one way or the other so that they could take the land. Um, and so that's why they sell them off uh, into slavery somewhere else. Uh, more about uh, Carolina colonial government and society. Here you can see on the uh, a Spanish map of Florida and Carolina. Um, at the time uh, there, uh, you know, you can see the how their mapping skills, uh, you know, they're limited uh, to what we can do today. But uh, the Constitution of Carolina uh, never expected it to be a free place. It was supposed to be a uh, old style feudal territory of the uh, great, uh, you know, planted, they called themselves great uh, plantation owners. Feudal society is like the old medieval society and before where a lord uh, controlled all the land and labor and made people serfs, right? So uh, that these would be uh, people tied to the land. Uh, they are uh, pretty much debt farmers. They uh, owe money. Um, and so, or their rent in that. So that's what Carolina was supposed to be. Um, it doesn't work out that way. Again, that's a feudal domain. Um, nonetheless, it does because they couldn't attract anybody and want to live there. Uh, so their uh, society ends up that, you know, they try to give some uh, rights here. But again, this is an extremely hierarchical uh, society in the Carolinas. Uh, uh, Carolina is going to become the richest colony of them all because of, especially South Carolina, because of rice plantations is what they're going to grow. They still call uh, grow rice there. This time you're in the supermarket or anything. I uh, look around um, and look at the packets of rice. A lot of them say grow in Carolina. Hell, uh, there's even a uh, Carolina brand rice. Um, so you can see that. Uh, this is going to be uh, the most slave of any of the slave areas. 
uh, you know, Virginia a close second. At one point, you're going to have more slaves than free people in um, uh, Carolinas. Uh, so it's going to be a, a key to it. So it's very hierarchical, even amongst free people. Uh, the top, uh, you know, uh, very few dominated. Slavery is key. And, the, you know, this becomes the rice kingdom again. Their riches there. Again, as always, look at the notes and everything else. Uh, that's just a close-up of the map uh, we were looking at before. Here's another one of uh, Virginia, Carolina, uh, you know, and all the other colonies at this point and how it was originally. Notice how Florida uh, uh, comes all the way up here. Uh, you, know, you can see this is all going to change uh, at one point, but uh, that is the old, uh, so there's Virginia, Maryland, yeah, and Carolina uh, there. Uh, just more maps, just to give you an idea here, old maps. All right, another new po colony, Pennsylvania, meaning Penn's Woods. Uh, so uh, that's William Penn, you can see there. Uh, Penn, a uh, very wealthy uh, Quaker family in England, uh, had lent the kings, uh, the royal families, lots and lots of money, and so they were owed a lot of debt. And so to settle the debt, uh, the royal family gave Penn all of this land in uh, in North America, uh, what becomes the state of Pennsylvania. Even today, Pennsylvania is really big, has a high population. Uh, but again, he was a Quaker. So this is a, a Christian brand, um, Protestant. Uh, the Quakers, they all actually like to call themselves the Society of Friends. Um, you know, what Penn saw this colony as a home for them and for everybody else, uh, religious freedom. Uh, granted, uh, Jewish people were not allowed to uh, hold office um, because they didn't believe in Jesus, but uh, he believed for Christians as a place of, it doesn't matter what, what denomination, Catholic, Protestant, Anglican, Baptist, Anabaptist, all of them. Um, so that's what he was looking for. He saw this as an open place. And indeed, uh, Quaker liberty was the belief that and they still believe this, that all people are equal in the eyes of God. So there is no, there should be no differences. Everybody should be seen as a spiritual equal. Woman, man, uh, African American, uh, Native American, just to use the groups that are going to end up there. Everybody is equal. Um, Quakers, very interesting. Uh, I have known um, a group, um, uh, very, uh, they're pacifists too, so they don't believe in war. And we're going to say that. So by necessi necessity, they have really good relations with the Indians at first. Uh, but Penn, uh, interestingly, uh, didn't just take land. He wanted to treat the natives uh, uh, well. So he would purchase land, sometimes buying the same land twice uh, if he had to, uh, to uh, uh, before distributing it to colonists. So he wanted to make sure they were taken care of. Uh, natives that were uh, you know, uprooted by others could have a safe place in Pennsylvania. So it was really supposed to be an opening, welcoming place there uh, for them. Remember, they're pacifists. Um, uh, so the other thing, the Charter of Liberty and Religious Freedom, again, I, I kind of mentioned this, but it's, so their early constitution, this Charter of Liberty, uh, really does in, in, ensure religious freedom, again, not for Jewish people. Uh, we're not talking about Muslims here because uh, there are no Muslims uh, in the colonies other than slaves, the vast majority, maybe some visitors, but yeah, a lot of the African slaves and actually were uh, Muslim, but we'll talk about that at a later date. Uh, but so really for Jews, uh, no religious freedom for Christians, they could. Um, and, you know, that is the limits of it. Uh, you know, Pennsylvania ended up being a really good place for people to go. As I said, it was uh, uh, open. Uh, people could be accepted. There was a good chance to get land. Uh, you know, even when if Penn bought the land from the Indians, he um, wanted to distribute land to uh, people so that they could make a living. All those had a really tough time in England. Uh, so it becomes known as the best poor man's country uh pennsylvania does really does become the best poor man's country um interestingly over time a lot of the people who would have been indentured servants in other uh colonies uh choose to move to pennsylvania instead that's going to lead to a decrease in uh, uh uh indentured servants uh, conversely and you know unbeknowing to them uh when you have less indentured servants uh, one of the reasons why they're going to start to move towards slavery um uh, but yeah, it's you know it's not all Penn's fault. But again, again if you, you had a choice to uh, working for someone without pay for seven years or moving to Pennsylvania to try your lot, most people are going to try Pennsylvania. Um, yeah, so this is a uh, relationship. Again, I talked about this before. Peaceful relationships, uh, as I mentioned, one they're pacifists, but also they're just their kind of worldview. And again, a pacifist is someone who doesn't believe in the use of violence. Uh, they had the chain of friendship that was their deals with the Indians. Again, saying that the Native Americans that. Uh, uh, you could come and have a place in um, uh, Pennsylvania. And we talked about acquiring native land. They buy it, uh, availability of land. Uh, and this is what I just talked about in the last slide, was relative freedom. 
in the colony. And so, uh, again, fewer and fewer serfs are going to end up in, uh, uh, you know, not serfs, uh, indentured servants are going to end up elsewhere because you can come to uh, Pennsylvania. And here is a, a painting here in this slide of a, a pen dealing uh, and meeting with the Native Americans. You could see it's uh, not like in the, a lot of the other ones, Native Americans um, are more or less depicted as they looked. Um, they're, you know, they're not made to look like devilish. Uh, you note know, the lack of weapons. Um, again, pacifists. Uh, so uh, let's move on. So yeah, here's some uh, more William Penn wel welcoming immigrant. Uh, this is an early uh, picture of this engraving. Again, we're going to see a lot of um, later in the slides. Uh, uh, you get more people from outside of England here, Germans and others, and most of them are going to end up in uh, Pennsylvania at this point. That's why if you go to Pennsylvania, you see a lot of what they call the Pennsylvania Dutch. Uh, Deutsch is German. Dutch is, you know, there is a country called the Dutch, but uh, it's just sort of the way the Americans called it. So the Amish, uh, 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 the Mennonites and others, lots of German heritage in Pennsylvania, even to this day. Uh, here's a Quaker meeting hall. Uh, again, uh, with the Society of Friends, there's no priests, uh, really, no one giving sermons. Uh, the, it, the story is uh, sort of, if you feel moved, you come you come to the Society of Friends, the, the meeting house, they call it, to uh, pray, contemplate, whatever. Um, and if you feel moved, get up and speak. But there's, you know, it, you could sit there in silence uh, and, and think if you want. There's no one uh, lecturing or sermons. Uh, it's, it's very different. Um, so American slavery, a different topic here. Oh, interestingly, let me say this first and foremost, though, uh, and it relates back to the Quakers. The Quakers believe everybody is equal. The Quakers are going to oppose slavery from the beginning. They are the first European, first Christian group in Europe like that to oppose slavery. They are going to be the longest and loudest anti-slavery uh, uh, people there are in Western Civ, in America, and even in England, the uh, abolitionist movement. Uh, picks up steam because of Quakers and others. And, you know, these are people that they say they believe everybody's equal and they are going to fight, not physically fight, but try to convince and try to get laws to end slavery. All right. So uh, next part here is the origins of American slavery. Uh, and that's what we're going to look at. I'm actually going to cut the video here. That's what we'll start in uh, the next video. And then there's just uh, uh, about 10 more slides left. So we'll start back here with the origins of American slavery, a history. All right. Thank you.